take responsibility. Responsibility is ownership. Own the situation you're in. Own who you are first, right? Self-awareness was own the yourself. first key you used. So when Tyler was talking about self-awareness, own yourself. You're the CEO of your own life. You're the president and you have a you business. And so some of the things that you can own about yourself are where you're at mentally, where you're at physically, own it. What you put in your body, you need to you need to concentrate on those things. And where you are spiritually, you own that. Then you own where you are in this physical world. Like where are you at as far as business, family, money, sex, whatever it is you want to own there, start owning it, right? Take responsibility for where you're at and that way you can determine where you want to go. Welcome everybody to the Sales Wolves podcast. Mm. I'm your host and I wish you were pizza. But my name is Tyler Harris. I'm Joseph Caldwell. And we I don't are, eat pizza. <laughs> and we are the That's sales why he wears that shirt. Wolves. Oh. Oh. Man, we hadn't done that in a while. This is the first time we've actually been here together for a Sales Wolves podcast. This has been lone wolf in it. It's been actually really good. <laughs> Gotten so much more accomplished. It's so much more done when you're out this of town. This is episode 67 <laughs> of the Sales Wolves podcast. And uh, today we're going to be talking about taking ownership. Today, and Joseph. Your beard. Today, Joseph is going to take his first step towards taking ownership. <laughs> and I'm excited for y'all to see it play out in real time. In real time. So let's talk about what you need to do. Let's own talk today. about what we need to do here. So let's just start off by asking the question, what does taking ownership mean to most people and then to us? I think... You know what I think most people think is they were like, oh, I'd like to own a business. Yeah. Let's use in business terms. I like to own a business because I want to control my schedule and I like golfing and I like mm -hmm. summer days. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. See, I don't even know what to say yeah. <laughs> because yeah. I don't know what to put in there, like uh, go to the lake or the beach or what do they like to and, do? And, and a lot of people will use, because one of the terms that I put down for taking ownership was living on your own terms. But a lot of people think living on your own terms means doing leisurely things all the time. <laughs> like, right. Like being able to justify, oh, well, I'm living life on, on my terms. That's why at 2 o'clock I want to go play golf. On a Tuesday. I'm not even sure how to spell that. What, golf? Mm -hmm. It's probably for the best. <laughs> but what, take on, what taking ownership really means is taking responsibility. Those two words, ownership and responsibility, are interchangeable in that. And this concept that I've been talking about a lot um, after meeting with Jonathan Parker a few weeks ago is this idea of setting the temperature. And right. so every room that you go into, every environment that you're in, every group that you're around, you set the temperature for the conversation. You set the temperature for what happens. You don't let those people uh, affect your environment. You affect their environment and you just set the tone uh, by taking ownership. And so... What does that look like? What does that look like? Yeah. I think that's... So set the, set the temperature in this room for everybody out there that's going, man, that sounds good. I took that down as a note. Mm -hmm. How the fuck do you do that? Yeah. So it's by right? commanding both in your presence and with what you're saying. So like in this example, I would say, okay, so today we're going to go through these examples of what taking ownership means and how you can implement that into your life. So listen up, take notes... And this is going to be some good stuff that may actually provide you value. And it's just setting the tone for what's about to happen. And always letting everyone else know who's in charge, who's going to be setting, setting the temperature. How would you do it? Don't rob the bank, please. Nobody move! <laughs> Nobody gets hurt! <laughs> <laughs> I love that I'm pretty sure the opposite are. I'm pretty sure she's on a uh, on a interview, which is awesome. But that's that's one way. I just broke loose a blood clot right back here, yeah, I think. That's good. <laughs> that's good. <laughs> but I think our job today on this podcast... I set the temperature, and Tyler, I think, wet himself. <laughs> I set a warmer temperature in my southern hemisphere. 
<laughs> it's below the equator. It's below. It's warm. But anyway. our job on this podcast, when we're talking about taking ownership, it's it's not about um, telling you anything that you need to do or how to do. It's more just giving you the realization that you've got everything that you need already. You just need to own it. Like you've got the abilities, you've got the skills, you've got everything. Now you just need to own it and harness it and actually uh, use it. So I think first thing we can talk about with taking ownership is self-awareness because until you've taken ownership of yourself, until you've figured out who you are, really it's a waste of time to even listen to this. Remainder. Yep. Um, so what's been, what's been maybe the biggest thing that you've um, discovered through this journey in self-awareness for you? As far as how you interact thing. with others, um, the biggest things, like changes you've implemented based on figuring out who you really are. You know, I realized that I recharge alone. Okay, that's which is which is important. I didn't know that for a while. I thought I recharged with people, huh. and I, and because I'm a people person, yeah. like I love being around people. But I didn't realize that always being around people, I was living in a drained state. Mm -hmm. And so when I realized that I recharged alone, I started separating out more. I started being by myself a little more or taking, you know, I'll go, you know, like this morning I got up at 3, 3.15, and uh, you wouldn't answer your phone. <laughs> I only texted, though. Mm -hmm. I didn't call. Oh, I should have, though. Maitland's gone. Sure. could have just started hammering your phone call. I talked to you Roger at 4.15. Oh, really? This morning. <laughs> I know. But but I realized, like, I'll, I'll get up and work like that. And I used to work straight on through. And 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 I had no idea that when I would get with my family, like, they were getting, like, they were getting, like, a 50th of me. Yeah. A 50th of my emotional involvement. Mm -hmm. Instead of me being aware that I'll get up that early just because I'm wired like that, I'll work. But I'm done by two. Mm -hmm. I finish up around two, and I don't go get with people then. Yeah, like I I separate out for an hour, hour and a half, mm -hmm. and then I'm like, man, I feel good again. And that's when I'll engage with my son or my daughter, or if I have to get some more work done, I'll get it done then, mm -hmm. and and or engage with my wife or or um, I said son or daughter, but son or daughters. Mm -hmm. um, but, uh, but that's interesting. But I realize that. But that's an interesting concept because a lot of people would look at that, and especially a lot of wives would hear that, and they'd be like, "Wait a second! So you're telling me that you leave work and you don't go straight home? You go be by yourself for an hour, hour and a half? Like, what about that hour and a half you could be spending home? But oh, wait a second! You're saying." that that hour and a half that you could have been <clears throat> at home would have been equally, if not worse, than having you not there. Yep. But by having you be able to recharge your battery alone and then go an hour and a half later, that then you're fully in when you're at home. And, uh, and every now and then it happens to me, right? Like every now and then I'll slip back mm -hmm. into, into the old way. So I was sitting at my, um, the thing in the kitchen where the little bar there is in my, mm -hmm. in my kitchen. I was sitting there and I was getting things done, and this was recently, and my daughter, Lainey, I hadn't seen her at the end of the day again yet, and so, and I don't see her in the morning times usually, because I'm usually gone. She came up and stood beside me, and I didn't even notice. Mm -hmm. I didn't see that she was standing right mm -hmm. there. And so I stopped typing probably five minutes later, and I looked over and I was like, Buggy, because I call her Buggy. Mm -hmm. I was like, Buggy, why didn't you come hug me? Why, it's good to see you, and she was like, Daddy. I stood beside you for, for like two minutes and you didn't even notice me. And I was like, that's why I have to recharge. I have to be fully engaged when I'm with them. And it takes self-awareness to do that. Mm -hmm. So, Yeah, I know for me, one of the biggest takeaways was realizing that a lot of times, and using an example like with the office here, like people weren't feeling that I cared from mm -hmm. me because I'm not like a touchy feely. I'm not like a hugger. I'm not, um, even very nice. Most of the times or well, it's not like genuine proactively. Like, I, like, I don't know. I'm just not like, I mean, TJ probably knows it better. Like I don't ever compliment TJ really ever. I just love messing and it's not with that. I don't like, like TJ or it's not that I don't like 
TJ, mm -hmm. if you were filming me, I would compliment you all the time. Okay, so just I can. But I don't, you and nice that's just. Hair, but that's just me, and so for me, it was realizing that. Like you remember that one day when I realized that, and I came and in you that day with gift cards. And, yeah, and you and spent like six hundred dollars, like seven hundred and something dollars, like on gift cards for everybody, and I just and I just told everybody, I was like, look, like I've come to understand that you guys might not feel love from me or feel that I care, but I do care about you. It's just I don't show it, and like I'd rather go work thirty hours straight than hug any of you. And it has nothing to do with you. It's everything that's just me. But we've been working on that. Just so you guys know, we've been working on Tyler's <laughs> hugging and no. uh, and his touchy fit. And actually, when I when I grabbed your what is that thing called right here? Lat. Yeah, yeah. When I when I slapped that thing earlier, you actually enjoyed me touching it, didn't you? No, I didn't. <laughs> All right, but it's time I'm, for a I'm hug. Glad, but I'm glad time, that you felt it's that. It's time for a hug. I'm glad that you felt. Oh. Uh, oh, oh, oh. Uh, thank you. Here, here, here. I appreciate Touch that. my bald head. No, that's... <laughs> <laughs> Is your hand slick? <laughs> <laughs> but it's figuring out how you... Tyler's super self-aware. <laughs> It's just how you how you affect others. Like so, your awareness is just being aware of your surroundings. But self awareness is how you affect those surroundings, yeah. and a lot of that's how people receive. Like, you'll realize that people don't receive what you're trying to convey in the way you're trying to convey it. True, uh, and that's important. So that's probably been one of the biggest areas um, for me. And at the end of the day, when we talk about taking ownership, I think. The big part of taking ownership for me was taking the power back. Yeah. And so there was a period of two and a half years where I was just playing this blame game and playing the victim. And I was pointing my finger out to these things that happened to me, this divorce, this termination, this failed job, this failed marriage, this, I was pointing out. And what I didn't realize is by pointing it back at myself, it enabled me to take all that power back. That I was giving those people and those organizations, I was giving them all the power. If, if, if you're in your situation because of your failed marriage, then you need that failed marriage or that other person's permission to get out of it. Mm -hmm. And if you're there because of you, so literally anytime you play the blame game and you point outward, it puts handcuffs on you. Yeah. And you literally can't do anything until you take responsibility for whatever the situation was and the handcuffs fall off and you're able to help yourself out of that situation. That's how it works every time. And you can feel that power when you take that back. Like when you take ownership or when you take responsibility and you say, okay, all this stuff is my fault, you can literally, like I, I felt it. I felt this sense of power come back to me in that I could do something about it. That's right. Because I couldn't do anything about it if I kept thinking that these things were external and were happening to me. But when I pointed back at myself and realized that no, 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 I did these things to me. And if I did these things to me, then I got myself into this and I can get myself out of it. And a lot of times, man, when we're talking about this, um, you know, people, people will say, well, I mean, there's some serious stuff that happens to people. We're not negating that. Um, you know, you, you, you might, there might be a lady watching or a guy watching or, or whatever, and they say, well, I was raped. How, how, can, how can, you know, that's not my fault, right? No, you're right. That's not your fault. But if you let it keep you in bondage, it is your fault. And I hate to tell you that. Um, I hate to be the bearer of bad news. Yes, was it evil? Absolutely. Was that an atrocious thing that happened? Absolutely. Does the other person deserve to be punished? Repeatedly, yes, he does, or, or she, or whatever it was, whatever the situation. But if you allow what happened to you to steal your future, then that's your fault. That's your fault. I love how Gary Vee has that and. It's like, just put whatever terrible situation... My parents were both drug addicts, and I was raped and? repeatedly as a child. And? And? Like that, that's not going to change. <laughs> the past happened, and that's nope. not going to change. All you, can, all you can do is change yourself. And I think there's so many people. If anyone has ever been in a situation that you've been in and still succeeded, then, then that's it. That's all you need to know. And if not, then you can be the first. Yeah, exactly. And so I want to go through step-by-step step some things with taking ownership. The first is know your why and getting clear on your why. 
Um, this is something that I've struggled with um, over the years is, is really figuring out like, like long term down the road, like what it looks like, what you're working towards, what you want. Um, but even in the short term, like figuring out like what what you want. For me, like my why is my family. It's it's those things that you think about when things do get tough. Because if your why is not strong enough, uh, what's the the um, phrase? If your why is not strong enough, your how excuses will matter. be, or your excuses oh. will be, or something like that, or. Or maybe it's the opposite. Like the, the, if your why is strong enough, then the how doesn't matter. Is what some people say. Yeah, but. yeah. And so, but it's true because if the, if you don't have a strong why, as soon as obstacles come in the way and you start to struggle, you'll just crumble because it's not it's not built on anything solid. Uh, and the second is to make a decision. Just making a decision that hey, from here forward, I am taking ownership and I've made the decision uh, to do whatever it takes to make it happen. Mm. From there, you got to find an accountability partner. And I think this is this is crucial and where a lot of people fail. And I think it's just looking at the reality of if whatever issue that you're struggling with, if you could have figured it out on your own already, you would have. And so it it takes having someone that can keep you accountable, having someone, I think, someone of the same sex that you can talk to on a regular basis that will call you out on That'll the stuff you. that you were doing wrong, that'll hug you when you don't want it want to be hugged <laughs> it's not necessarily that important in the process <laughs> but having someone that you can talk to about yeah. these things on a regular basis and that you can stay accountable with is going to be key because um, you can't do life alone and then the last thing is just no, no, community I think you're right on that before yeah. you jump into into something else community is key but you know what um, it's awesome it's really awesome to have people that you have a community with that you can hustle hard with or that you can you can talk about goals with and you, they can all set their goals and go after them but at the end of the day it's you it's you against the world and when you become very self-aware um, you can face that alone knowing you're not alone there's other people that are going after their goals and their dreams and you can have comrades in that but uh, but man you have to do the work. Yeah, you have to put the effort in. Mm -hmm. um, somebody else reaching their goals and dreams, it's not going to help you reach yours. Yeah, um, it's awesome to be a part of that community, and I have those communities. Mm -hmm. We have those communities yeah. that we're a part of that that I love. I get lots of energy from being around people that are chasing a dream and doing something big, and they're taking ownership of their life and personal responsibility, family responsibility. They're doing great things, mm -hmm. but at the end of the day. Um, it's you that's going to lay your head on your pillow, knowing what you did. Yeah, you don't. You don't ever look at a, someone that's extremely successful. That some that you can look at and be like, "This dude is just straight owning it." And you don't hear that person say, "Like, yep, if it wasn't for John, me and John would talk every day. If it wasn't for John, I wouldn't be here right I wouldn't now. Wouldn't be here." It's like no. It was me. <laughs> yeah. I, I, at the end of the day, you got to put in the action. So, what's some of the things that hold people back from taking ownership? Excuses. Excuses. Blame. Fear. Fear. That. That. Both it's of those all. are probably rooted in fear, actually. Yeah. Blame and blame and excuses all get rooted in fear. They're to cover up fear. They're like they're like the braids on the on the head of fear. I thought of that looking at TJ. <laughs> <laughs> And, mm. and a lot of people, they talk about the fear of failure, but what I found is it's, it's not usually, it's really not the fear of actually failing, it's the fear of failing in front of people you care about. Yeah. And it's fear of failing in front of your friends, in front of your family, especially in this world of social media, if you're documenting any of this, it's fear of failing in front of the public. And it's a fear um, of not measuring up. Mm -hmm. It's a big fear for most, most people. Yeah, and fear, can be paralyzing. So how do people come, how do people overcome that fear of, of taking you know, ownership? <clears throat> I can only use some of the great fears that plagued me. One was public speaking. Okay. One was phone calls. Another one was cold calls walking in the door. So like everything that you have to do to be a good salesperson <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. were were the greatest fear. I would literally have rather kissed a copperhead. Mm-hmm like French kiss, the mm -hmm. copperhead, than do any of those things right there. And those um, of you that aren't in the southeast here, that's a snake. 
You, that's a poisonous snake, a venomous snake. Yeah. Do you know 17 people have been bit in Greenville County, been by Copperheads this year already? And, and that's just Greenville Memorial's numbers. Do you know? <laughs> Are we starting in on just, jokes again? Just, I was just going to come up with this a completely random fact. No, but do you know that in regards to taking on a ship, that when your wife posted that picture, I actually sent her a text message asking her if she wanted me to come over there and get it mm -hmm. and prayed that she had already taken care of it. Yeah. <laughs> Because yeah, I told her. Because I saw it on Facebook. I was like, "Hey, I was like, I was like, I mean, I was being serious. I was like, do you need me to come by and get that snake? And you know, I, I'd be happy to. I'm not happy to, but I'll, I'll do it." And she goes, "Oh, it's okay." She's like, "I actually bludgeoned it to death with a rock." With rocks. Yeah, with rocks. Yeah. And uh, and she was like, "I wish." She said she responded and said, "I wish I would have. I wish you." I wish she said, I wish I would have thought about it. And she said, I would have had you come over and have TJ film it. And then, oh, yeah. And I put, like, the title of the vlog was um, uh, Tyler Screams at Highest Pitch Recorded on, on Camera. <laughs> that thing was three feet long. Yeah. Uh, Do you realize my front porch, it was curled up on my front porch? And see, those snakes, Copperhead's reason, mm -hmm. you usually live when you get bit by one, but... But copperheads give zero warning. There's no warning, and they strike immediately. So my kids would have walked right out the front door and gotten bit. Anybody that walked out the front door or up on the front steps, done, gone goblin. Isn't that crazy? It was over three feet. I was going to take two shovels, take the head off one, attach it to the stick of the other, to where I had, where I had like the longest shovel of all time. <laughs> <laughs> what is going. that poking up over the top of that window? I have no idea what they're doing out there. So um, the anyway, result of taking ownership. I was in Greece, by the way. Yeah. By the way, so I took my mom to Greece for Mother's Day. He's he's uh, performing at our local uh, theater in town. He's been rehearsing all month. Greece the musical. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that one. That was, yeah. that was a stretch. So the result of taking ownership is self discipline. And so I love this quote, Aristotle, we are what we repeatedly do. Excellence is not an act, but a habit. So let's talk about that real quick. So self-discipline being the I may only be a symptom. fisherman's son. What's that? <laughs> I'm not going to finish it. I think I knew that. I think I know that one. Um, Keep talking. So with self-discipline... A lot of people will, t will ask us and they'll send questions and send a DM on Instagram and they'll say like, how do you stay motivated? How do you stay motivated? How do you, you seem so motivated all the time. Yeah. But the I'm reality not is all not. the time. Yeah. It's just, it's just disciplines that have been developed over time to where we can get stuff accomplished even when we don't feel like, even when we don't feel motivated that we're still able uh, to do what we need to do. Um, I think it was Gary Ryan Gary Ryan Blair um, said, self-discipline is an act. I can't read your notes. Cultivation? <laughs> self-discipline is an act of cultivation. It requires you to commit today's actions to tomorrow's results. There's a season for sowing, mm. a season for reaping. Self-discipline helps you know which is which. So that, that's the reason I put that on there is the part of the today's actions, to connecting today's actions to tomorrow's results. <laughs> Thank you for finishing your quote. <laughs> that's uh, but, funny. But self-discipline, it's, it's the foundation which all, I mean, it's, it's the foundation which all success is built on. All like, there's not a single successful person that didn't have an extreme amount of self-discipline. No, it's... And I think being in our business, uh, it's a business in which it's the only way to survive. Yep. And so for me, at a time in my life where I needed structure, um, it provided that structure, uh, structure and demanded discipline. Mm-hmm. 
And, and I'm extremely grateful that that's kind of how things played out because it demanded me to be somewhere at five o'clock in the morning. Yep. And there wasn't a question on whether or not you were gonna be there because you had to be there. Had to. And then had to be there 11 o'clock that night and had to work crazy hours. And there was never a question of like, well, if you'd like to, or if you want to, or if you feel like it, mm -hmm. you can do this. It was very, very structured, um, which has enabled me to take those structures and put those in place in all the other areas of yep. Of life, and I wish people would would grasp that. But you I have also... one thing to say about that. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. It is true. The next point on here is gratitude. We just haven't gotten to it yet. I'll save it for that for that chapter, <laughs> for that section. Um, but at the end of the day, it's called self discipline for a reason. No one can give you self discipline. It still takes you making the decision That's a to do the things um, that you need to do. Uh, but I think. It takes time to develop this, to, to develop self-discipline, which then, is it self-discipline before habits or is it habits create self, create discipline? Self-discipline. So it's discipline, it's having the discipline to do something over a long period of time, which then forms habits. Mm -hmm. So it forms habits. And your life is a culmination of your habits. Your success is yeah. a culmination of your habits, your everyday Good habits. Good or bad. Good or bad, yeah. 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 And so that brings us and to then the, it's taking responsibility. I mean, that's what we're talking about. It's taking ownership. Is you yeah. take ownership for where you're at because you've created where you're at, um, or you've allowed that to happen, or whatever. So ownership is nothing more than taking the responsibility for that, and then not just saying, "Yep, it's my fault," but then if you want to change it, you have to do something about it. Um, you have to actually discipline mm -hmm. yourself to form those new habits so that it creates a different life. Mm -hmm. So, and that brings really us to the last point, which is gratitude. And so thankful it's the last point. Uh, very grateful. Grateful this is about over. <laughs> <laughs> so gratitude makes sense of the, our past, brings peace for today, and creates a vision for tomorrow. That is some ethereal bullshit. <sighs> It sounds good, though, sounded, doesn't it? it that really gave me the pleasant, warm fuzzies. <laughs> yeah, but no, but in all, all seriousness, that's true. That is well, true. The, well, I mean, for the, the reality is every single person, if you're able to watch this or listen to this, then it is a fact that you have an insane amount to be grateful for. Insane. You either have a phone, a computer, you've got access to the Internet, which means that you're probably in the top 2% of the world. Right. And you have an incredible amount, amount of things to be grateful for. It's all You understand about English, which is kind of cool. You understand English, which means that you have the ability to harness the power of that comes from our words. <laughs> <laughs> what were you trying? Did you just come up with that crap on the spot? I don't know. I just, you have the ability to understand English, thinking. which means you're probably a single language person, which shame <laughs> on you because we're the only ones. <laughs> If you were from somewhere else, you would know your language and this one, which I commend. Anyway. So gratitude, it's all about perspective. But unless you have gratitude, unless you're grateful for the stuff that you already have, I just don't think that it will be as easy for you to get more. Yeah. Um, and in, until I was grateful for the things that I had when I felt like I had not much, uh, until I was grateful for that, and grateful for the the tiniest things. Grateful. I used to I used to say every morning for like an eighteen month period. It was in the shower every morning. I would say that I'm grateful for the opportunity to work hard and make good money. But it was that I was gr grateful for the opportunity to work hard to make great money. It wasn't. I was just grateful to make great money. I was grateful that that the opportunity, opportunity that work, day huh? to go work my face off. Yep. And the side effect of that was being able to make great money. Uh -huh. But it was the being grateful to work hard. But I mean, being grateful for a roof over your head, a car, a, something to eat. I mean, all these things that we take for granted. Uh, all these that we think are we think we're entitled to them. Yeah. But let me tell you, you're entitled to nothing Man. on this earth. Nothing. You're not entitled to your next breath. That's that's why. A spirit of gratitude like what you're talking about is so vital for people to understand yeah. that they're grateful for 
I'm here, mm -hmm. I'm still here. I just took a breath. And that look at this, I'm are... looking at you. It's not the best thing to look at, but I'm grateful <laughs> for my eyesight. It's not the worst. It's not. <laughs> 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 the blood flowing through my veins, the yeah. the skin covering my body. Like people just don't take it to that level. The the everything. I mean, and that these... there's people all over the world that are praying day and night for the things that we complain about yep. every single day. Yeah, praying for the things that we ninety percent of things that earth. we scrape off our plate into the trash can every day. Ninety percent of the earth is praying for that right there. Yeah. That's true. That they would have that problem. And you can take gratitude a step further when you really start incorporating the law of attraction and start being grateful for the things you don't have yet, but that you're working mm -hmm. towards as though you already have them. Yeah. Um, we talk about that, that idea of that kind of creating a fraudulent environment to be in, but that you need to be grateful for the things that you want to have happen as though that it's a reality. I have the best example is. of that known to man. Like yeah. this is one where I thought it was an impossibility but I started being so grateful. You remember last, was last year when you had your beard really long? Mm -hmm. And literally every day in the shower, I'd be like, I'm grateful that Tyler shaves and he has a slick face and he actually looks like a real human. I would say that every day. Every and day. it only took like three months. And dude, I don't even know what happened, but you came in slick shaven. It was, <laughs> I'm the only one that finds me humorous right now. <laughs> I just find it weird that you're talking about me in the shower, but. I'm grateful for you in the shower every day. <laughs> <laughs> but Andy Vasella talks about this all the time, about like how specific and detailed. Oh, like yeah. He talks about pulling up onto the. Um, tarmac. Tarmac in his, you know, Rolls Royce mm -hmm. and what the handrail on the stairs felt mm -hmm. like as he would go up into the specific type of jet and the specific color and striping and what the interior would feel like and look like and smell like and this process of being grateful for these things that he then would have uh, ultimately and that's some that's a little higher level thinking than a lot of people are willing to oh yeah to do but man you hear you only hear people you only hear these stories of people that have done it from people that are incredibly, incredibly wealthy yep. and successful. So anytime I see those type things, I'm like, hmm. Like some things we were talking about yesterday, I'm like, I want to find out if those people have done it. Because if those people have done it, well, I'll look into it. I remember, I'm not really concerned in doing stuff that like, if I look at like the top 50 most influential, successful people in the world, if they've never done any of them, I'm like, eh, probably put that on the back, on the back burner for a little while. I remember 14 years ago, man, I wanted to own a home and I lived in an apartment off of Haywood Road mm -hmm. and I literally, I didn't completely understand what we're talking about, but I would walk, I would walk up those apartment stairs and as I was walking up the stairs, I would be like, God, I wish this, I wish it would just quit lying to me. This isn't real. I live in a home of my own. I own my house. I don't live in an apartment because that was my goal. Mm -hmm. It's not, apartment living's not bad. Renting a home's not bad. I just wanted to own a home. Mm -hmm. And that's when Isabella had been born and she was just a couple months old. And I remember every single time I walked through the door of that apartment, I was like, what a lie. And I wasn't saying it like in a bad way. I was just like, man, I'm so excited. I own my own home. I don't live in an apartment, but I would walk right in that apartment. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and it was, I think it was about a year, a year and a half. And we were able to buy, buy a home. Yeah. But what about the time that you went to that, um, resort? Was it in Canada? something Vancouver with your, your wife no when you went to that resort and they says it's your first time here oh yeah Is that, wasn't that Canada or no? yeah that well I was telling a story about a guy that I knew that did that okay yeah yeah that wasn't me gotcha. but um, but yeah it was in Banff Canada and um, and he went actually for the first time and they asked him have you been here before with us and he said a thousand times because he had gone to that place over and over and over in his mind. He had looked at it, he'd studied it. There's places on this earth that literally when people tell me about them or ask about them, I almost tell them I've been there already <laughs> yeah. and I haven't been there. Yeah. Like I can't remember, I was talking to somebody in, in Greece like about, in prison, <laughs> like prison. <laughs> I've been there over and over and over. Um, but uh, but no, that's kind of funny you say that because people that don't do this live in a prison of their own mind. Ah. And uh, 
and, and you'll go there every damn day for the rest of your life. If you don't get a hold of this gratitude, you'll live in that same prison. Like, and you can blame like, everybody else for it. It's like bump set spite there. Yeah. <laughs> Although you didn't realize what you were doing, I appreciate it. Yes. I'm gra- grateful. Good job, Grasshopper. <laughs> I can't wait to hear you talk this weekend with our training coming up on ownership. I'm wear this t-shirt. Hey, you should wear that T-shirt. Not only should you wear that T-shirt, but you should probably revamp some of these damn notes. <laughs> <laughs> With that, I'm going to run back through this real quick. I'm Not taking really. ownership. Take responsibility. Responsibility is ownership. Own the situation you're in. Own who you are first, right? Self-awareness was Own the yourself. first key you used. So... When Tyler was talking about self-awareness, own yourself. You're the CEO of your own life. You're the president and you have a you business. And so some of the things that you can own about yourself are where you're at mentally, where you're at physically, own it. What you put in your body, you need to you need to concentrate on those things. And where you are spiritually, you own that. Then you own where you are in this physical world. Like where are you at as far as business, family, Money, sex, whatever it is you want to own there, start owning it, right? Take responsibility for where you're at, and that way you can determine where you want to go. So that was the first key. Then we went on from there ripping. Yep, taking back the power. Um, No blame, no excuses. Yep. We went through uh, kind of step-by-step, know your why, make the decision, accountability partners, committing, and then the fears that you have to overcome um, in order to do that. Um, what is that thing they say about fear? False evidence appearing real. Mm-hmm. See, fear is where it starts, and the fear, that nagging feeling, that fear of something, or or the cold sweats you get, like with the fears I was talking about. But uh, when it starts there, then you make excuses. So I'd make excuses of, no, no, I can't. I'm I'm not able to come. I've got this thing. I can't. I can't do that presentation in front of that group of people because I have these obligations, I've got family obligations. Like you'll use, you'll use the things in your life that are legitimate excuses. Excuse is nothing but a skin of a reason. Skin of a reason, it's an excuse. I, I use my family so I don't have to go do the thing I'm fearful of. So family's the skin of the reason. That's a real reason. Family's a mm-hmm. real reason for something. But it's skin of a reason and you stuff it with a lie. <laughs> and that is what an excuse is. Anyway, that probably would have been better to use on the front end of this thing. But <laughs> And then the self-discipline, just to do it anyway. When you don't feel motivated, when you don't feel like doing it, it all comes down to taking ownership, being having the self-discipline to do what you're supposed to do, even when you don't feel like it. And gratitude, being grateful for what you already have, and then taking a step further and being grateful for the things that you don't have yet, but that you are working towards as though that you already already have achieved it and already have them. It sounds as though you were about to quote a verse. Nope. It's grateful. Just grateful. <laughs> Just grateful. So with that, this is episode 67 of the Sales Wolves podcast. I'm your host, Tyler Harris. I am actually your host, <laughs> Joseph Caldwell. <laughs> and I and we <laughs> are the Sales Wolves. Oh! oh.